Good morning, everybody. I'm Elodie Beels, urologist at the University Hospital in Leuven, Belgium. My talk will be about the long-term functional outcomes and patient satisfaction of artificial urinary sphincter implantation for male non-neurogenic incontinence. The artificial urinary sphincter has been used since 1972 and has proven to be a reliable clinical option for male non-neurogenic incontinence. But robust scientific data about its exact efficacy, complication profile and long-term patient satisfaction rates are still lacking. In this study, we want to share our 30-year experience with AUS implants in a tertiary referral center. We retrospectively analyzed implant survival and revision-free survival. Long-term functional outcomes and patient satisfaction were evaluated. Also, for all outcomes, we wanted to identify potential risk factors for failure. All patients who had an AOS implanted between June 89 and January 2020 were included. All implants were AMS 800 and performed by two experienced surgeons. A perineal approach with placement of a bulbar cuff was performed and a 6170cm water abdominal reservoir was implanted through a separate inguinal incision. Standard antibiotic prophylaxis was given and sphincters were deactivated at the end of the surgery. Activation of the device was after six weeks and a first office evaluation after two to three months. Long-term patients reported continence and satisfaction rates were assessed by a telephone questionnaire in April 2020 of all patients with a functional artificial urinary sphincter in situ. Patient satisfaction was based on the score they gave on the PGII questionnaire and time to revision and time to explant were analyzed and Kaplan-Meier curves of revision-free and explant-free survival were constructed based on the available data. Also, Kaplan-Meier curves for time to become socially incontinent and time to becoming dissatisfied were constructed. Multiple parameters were studied as potential risk factors for revision surgery, social continence and patient satisfaction. In the last 30 years, a total of 263 patients were implanted in AOS. The median patient age was 69 years and 86.7% of the patients became incontinent due to radical prostatectomy. 83.4% of patients had comorbidities, including prior pelvic irradiation, diabetes, anticoagulation therapy, previous surgery for incontinence or treatment for stricture disease. In these 263 patients, a total of 294 sphincters were implanted. 249 patients received one implant, 40 patients received a second implant, and 5 patients underwent the third AOS implant. Of these implants, 71, or 24%, were again explanted. Main reasons for explants were urethral erosion and infection. After five years, 75.3% of the implants were still in situ and medium time to explant was 16.2 years. A total of 73 patients, or 25%, underwent revision or maintenance surgery. Overall revision-free implant survival was 62.1% after five years, with a medium revision-free implant survival rate of approximately 10 years. In multivariable analysis, anticoagulation therapy, previous AOS implants and treatment for urethral structure disease were significant risk factors for explants. Previous AOS implant and urethral structure disease were also independently associated with degrees revision-free implant survival. Controversy remains regarding the impact of previous pelvic irradiation. In our cohort, almost half of the patients received prior pelvic radi radiotherapy, which is a fairly high proportion of patients compared to other similar studies. In univariate analysis, but not in multivariate analysis, prior pelvic radiation therapy was a risk factor for AUS explant and not achieving social continence. Although, it must be noted that patients with prior radiotherapy are often more, more comorbid which may also influence AOS survival and outcome rates. Interestingly, patients receiving anticoagulation therapy in our cohort were at increased risk for AOS explant. 
anticoagulation therapy also proved to be an independent risk factor for social continence and patient satisfaction. To our knowledge, no other previous studies report this association, although its exact underlying mechanism remains elusive. Overall social continence rate after five years was 60.3%. After 10 years, social continence rate decreased to 37.9%. The medium time to becoming socially incontinent was approximately seven years. Nevertheless, a significant, significant proportion of patients with a functional AOS in situ for longer than 10 years will remain socially continent. At multivariable analysis, taking anticoagulation therapy, previous AOS implant and other previous anti-incontinence surgery were associated with a higher risk for social incontinence. In April 2020, a total of 142 patients, which is 54% of the total population, with a functional AOS in situ, agreed to complete validated quality of life and incontinence questionnaires. Socially dry rate in this patient group was about the same as in the overall study population, which was 51.4%. Patient satisfaction rates were remarkably high and reached 97.9% .9 at 5 years of follow-up and 87.5% after 10 years. These results correspond with other long-term outcomes in literature. Interestingly, a higher bladder capacity was associated with being satisfied and patients who were completely incontinent before AOS implant were significantly more satisfied than other patients. To conclude, in this large caseload series with extended follow-up and specific focus on long-term functional outcomes and patient satisfaction, a significant proportion of AOS implants needed revision or explant surgery. Long-term continence rates are acceptable, but tend to decrease by time. Nonetheless, if patients can maintain a functional AOS in situ, long-term patient satisfaction rates remain high. AOS patients should be appropriately counseled in the light of these findings. Thank you very much.